Oh, bloody righty. Rugby World Cup final, the final to end all finals. We obviously have the Springboks versus the All Blacks. Both teams battling it out for the golden fourth Rugby World Cup. And I think to rightfully say they're the greatest rugby nation in the world. Um, it's a big final, obviously, no doubt about that. But let's get into, I guess, the makeup of the teams to start off with, because I think that's where we start. The final, South Africa have gone for the 7 1 bench split, which we know can work. We have seen from them the illustrious bomb squad, as they call themselves, dominant as they come off the bench. Can they do a job? Of course they can. We've seen it happen. Um, so I think, you know, that is where their strength is going to be. If they're in within 10 points, within 7 points, uh, at about the 50th minute, 50th minute mark, and that bomb squad comes on, it's, it's South Africa's to lose. I think they would be thinking that. If they can be within 7 and, you know, Ox Nish comes on with some Quagga Smith, RG Snyman, just the absolute force that they've selected there, they'll be backing themselves to win it. For the All Blacks, it's the opposite. They've got to start strong. Definitely the better team on paper with flair and with attacking ability. South Africa are going to go and try and, I guess, dominate up front at the start. And if they can play in the right area, South Africa, they'll tick over the scoreboard and they'll make sure that their bomb squad is in a position to win them the game. For the New Zealanders, got to score early. Score early, score early, score often, and score tries. I don't think three points are going to win New Zealand the game here. However, scoreboard pressure, they cannot let that get to them. So that's not me saying three points on offer, turn it down, but if there is an opportunity to score a try and it's a 40, 45 metre kick on an angle, I think they go for the corner and, and see what they can do against the South African um, pack. Now, let's go through quickly their journeys here. And this is big to me. South Africa, obviously in Pool B, played uh, Scotland to start off with, won that convincingly enough, not so, not so much where you would be like, oh my God, this is the greatest South African team, two steps on the field, but good enough to show us that they were better than Scotland. Uh, cruised through the rest of their pool games, beating Tonga and Romania, lost to Ireland, and in what which I would think is one of the games of the tournament in the pool stages, a 13-8, just tight tussle. Neither team wanted to give it up. In the end, Ireland pull out the victory. What happened to New Zealand in, in their pool uh, is obviously first game, first ever pool loss to France. In that loss, meaning that these two teams wouldn't meet in the quarterfinals as it all went on, New Zealand went to whip everyone else, Uruguay, Italy, in which was one hell of a, a game, Italy versus uh, New Zealand. Again, I, I sat there and a lot of people were having a joke about me about being nervous about the Italy game and the fact that I was nervous as an All Blacks fan going into an Italian game. You shouldn't be nervous, but you were because we lost that game round of the Rugby World Cup and the performance they put on there turned the tides a little bit and we moved through Namibia first, then Uruguay after the Uru uh, Italy game and then on to a, a quarterfinal showdown with Ireland. So the two teams that have won the pools were now playing South Africa and New Zealand who are our finalists. You know, make it make sense in world rugby, but hey. South Africa go on to beat France in what is an all-time game. Just, I don't even know what you can describe. I think you can describe it as rugby. Pure rugby. Um, New Zealand versus Ireland, not too different. One of the games of the tournament, you know, right up there with this quarterfinal against for South Africa versus France. New Zealand quite clearly holding on at the end there. Managed to hold on 37 phases. Very famous victory over the Irish. We've had their numbers recently. So two Southern Hemisphere teams head into the semi-finals. New Zealand gets Argentina, who hadn't fired a punch most of the tournament, whereas South Africa get England, who had won every single game, were the only undefeated team left. New Zealand beat Argentina quite convincingly on a Friday night, sets themselves up well, Does it so, beats them so well that the yellow-carded Scott Barrett in the 66th minute is able to stay off the field, that's how big of the beating it was, and get an extra four minutes of rest. South Africa, on the other hand, a really tight game against England. England showed up. This isn't so much that South Africa didn't show up. England showed up. England played the right style against South Africa, and that's what led to South Africa having to make those early changes, having South Africa having to, I guess, turn it around with that bomb squad and fight for this victory. And fight they did, and a 77th, 78th minute penalty by Andre Pollard put them into the final, and here we are. Two teams with three Finals each, three World Cups each. South Africa undefeated in Rugby World Cup finals. 
New Zealand with only one loss in the Rugby World Cup final, and that's against South Africa. And to be fair, this is, I've I've always said, I think New Zealand are the only team that can knock South Africa out of a Rugby World Cup um, for the past few years. I've I've really felt that. Um, Obviously, 2019, last World Cup, South Africa lost to New Zealand in the pool stages. New Zealand went on to lose to Ireland, uh, England in the semi final, and then in the end, South Africa came out on top. So now we go into this final and I go, uh, I sit here and I go, I've said it this all along, the only team that can knock South Africa or the Springboks out is New Zealand. However, when it comes to finals, because Rugby World Cup finals in South Africa, two in the same thing. It, it, it's like white and rice, you know what I mean? So I sit there and I go, looking at this game from the outside, both teams know what they have to do. If South Africa are within seven points at the 50th minute mark, They'll consider that game should be theirs to win. New Zealand need to get up by, I want to say, 14 points before the 50-minute mark. And we saw it in Mount Smart Stadium. And this is where I'm going back to. New Zealand got off to a hot start. South Africa still reeled them in. And then at that 50-minute mark, South Africa started to turn the tide and and came back a little bit to make it about a 35-20. We know what happens if New Zealand don't start well. And South Africa get on top because at Twickenham that was what happened, thirty-five to seven. As we look back, I don't think this game's going to be that big of a blowout. Now, the the reason I say that is there are some tired bodies. This has been one of the most grueling World Cups for two finalists. I think probably back, dating back to two thousand three, maybe. South Africa have had the hardest draw, the hardest run into a Rugby World Cup final, bar none. They are all just about all. I know. I'm pretty sure they're starters. And correct me if I'm wrong. All but Kirtley Ardenser are over 50 caps for a South Africa played. So they're an old squad. They have had a really hard World Cup. That's not to say that New Zealand hasn't. And New Zealand's very similar, an experienced squad. You look at the likes of Sam Whitelock, Aaron Smith, um, even Sam Kane, uh, Brody Retallick, a lot of players leaving. It's the same for South Africa. This is their generation to do it. A lot of pressure on them, but a lot of pressure that they've already seen. They've already got the experience. So... It is going to be a fact that I don't think it's going to be a blow-away game from either team. I think New Zealand is slightly more rested because of the, the ease of the game they had last week, the lack of the physicality that the Argentinians built or brought. But saying that, South Africa right now have now won two and lost one game in these really tight affairs that South Africans love. The Irish game, they were there, a maul, five metres out on the last play of the game. You expect South Africa to score that and... Look, I'm I'm never going to question referees. I just think the ball was there to be played in that Irish game. Let's just say that. And it didn't come off. South Africa didn't win that game. But saying that, against France, they won that game. Against England, which I think was more impressive coming from behind like they did, they won that game. So sit here and count them out is just preposterous. But saying that, we have two teams, which I think are the two best teams at this World Cup, quite clearly have shown it. And the two best teams of quite potentially the last 20 years, going at it to decide which dynasty has been better for the past 20 years, in my opinion. If you say this started from the 2004 um, year onwards after uh, England and Australia played that final, it's been South Africa, New Zealand, New Zealand, South Africa, decision-making here. I've said it on the podcast, teams are catching up. This isn't going to live forever where it's New Zealand and South Africa. And so this for us to be our second final... I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to be in amazement. Now, one team may, may run right, and it may happen, and it may be the crowning jewel for that team. If South Africa win, it's a crowning jewel for this generation, which I would say is their golden generation. And that's hard to say when you talk about the Victor Matfields, John Smiths, all that. But I go, this team have won two World Cups back-to-back, have just done it in style, beaten the best of the best, their crowning moment. For New Zealand, this was the worst All Blacks team ever, apparently, heading into a Rugby World Cup. It's Ian Foster's crowning jewel. It's Sam Kane's crowning jewel. So there's a lot of storylines yet to be written that are going to be written tonight. And I'm just so excited, I think, for the fact that we have the two best teams in the final. We have two teams that have massive respect, but a lot of hatred at the same time. If you know what I mean. Like, I've always said it. Like, I hate the South African fans, but I love them at the same time because they make rugby what it is. I guarantee it's vice versa. And that's that's what the thing. Once the game's done, whoever's won has won, and that's respect that there is there. But it is a big game. 
The All Blacks choosing to put Nipolo Lala over Fletcher Newell on the bench for size and scrummaging to try and decrease that bomb squad impact is really interesting. The one halfback slash full one back reserve for the Springboks is really interesting. There's going to be a lot of stories come from this game and there's going to be a lot of tales. I don't think it's going to be a matter of who wants it more because I think both teams want it as bad as each other. I think it's going to be a who plays their style the best? Can the All Blacks get in front and then play that attacking style? Or can South Africa keep it close and tight and play that physical style? You've probably listened to about 100 Rugby World Cup previews before this one. And don't doubt me, they're all probably seeing, saying different things, saying many types of things. For me, as a neutral observer from the sports booth, as an All Blacks fan, I'm not a neutral observer, I don't know what I just said, but for a neutral observer... People who say that this is a boring final just don't quite understand how exciting this final is going to be to crown what I believe is the greatest rugby nation in the past 20 years. And this is the crowning moment. This is the crowning jewel for one of these teams. If you like what you've seen, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Comment who you think is going to win, who's going to take out the Rugby World Cup 2023. For now, I've been Luke from the Sports Booth. I will see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.